welcome to the Crimson Stitchery. My name is Anushka and this video is part two of my series about knitting with Holst Super Soft Yarn, a 100% wool fingering weight yarn that comes directly from the manufacturers with minimal processing and that requires a little bit of work at home in order to make it suitable for wear. If you haven't already, do click over to part one in this series about whole super soft yarn. There's a link on screen here now. And in that video, I run through some questions about what the yarn is, what makes it special, what makes it unique, and indeed what the process is that we have to go through as we knit with whole super soft. Show notes for this video can be found in the down bar here below on YouTube. So do click onto there to find links and more information on the things that I've mentioned in this video. And lastly, before I get started, I'd just like to reiterate that this video is not sponsored or paid promotional content in any way. It's just intended to be a helpful video that gives you some information about using a product that I recommend, but that requires a little bit more work than knitters might be used to when purchasing yarn. And now it's time to knit with it. So I have knitted two swatches out of this Venetian red. So I've wound off half of it into a ball and held it double. And they've got quite different effects. So, Let's take a look at the two swatches. So I have done two swatches with Holst Super Soft Held Double and I've done them in the round, which is why there's all of this stuff going on at the back. And I've just swatched in stocking stitch. And I've done two swatches because I'm not quite sure which one's going to be give me the best results once it is washed and once all of the spinning oil is washed out. So let's take a look. This one is the first one that I did and it was knit using a five millimeter metal needle. And as you can see, the fabric is quite dense. You can't really see anything going on behind. Um, it's got some elasticity, but it does retain its shape quite nicely. Um, and yeah, it feels really firm. And if this were any other yarn, if this wasn't um, a yarn that I knew that I needed to wash out and you know finish the processing of it, I would probably be quite happy with this as it was. Here's the second swatch that I did, and I knit this one on a six millimeter wooden needle. So compared to the five millimeter metal needle of that one below, um, it's quite a lot bigger. It feels totally different. So you can see much more easily, you know, through the fabric. It's slightly more translucent, but also it's a lot, you know, it's a lot drapier. Um, crushes nicely, there's a lot more movement in the fabric, whereas this one here had more structure, this one. Um, yeah, so it's a lot more see-through and let's stretch it and see. Yeah, there's way more give in that and also the um, the retention of the shape isn't so good. So this one is going to be much more loose and drapey and it's probably not going to conform to the shape of the body so nicely, but it's just going to kind of hang there. So they're going to have quite different properties, these two fabrics. So now what's left is to measure up the swatch and take note. So I'm just gonna do that with a tape measure and a pencil. And I will just take a note of what the swatch measurements are in my notebook here, and I will take three horizontal and three vertical measurements per swatch and just write them down. Fast forward and I finished measuring and the five millimeter swatch came out with an average of 19 stitches and 26 rows per 10 centimeters or four inches. And the six millimeter swatch came out with an average of 16 stitches and 22 rows per four inch. And the 16 stitches for the yarn held double is actually the manufacturer's recommended tension. So next step is to wash out the spinning oil and I'm gonna do that in my bathroom sink. So let's go. Okay, so here I am in my bathroom. I'm just gonna wash it out in the bathroom sink, nothing fancy. So let me just put the stopper in and I'm just gonna be running the tap um, to kind of a lukewarm temperature. So it's a little bit noisy because we've got the extractor fan going and obviously we've got the sink going, but I just wanted to talk through what I'm gonna be doing to my two swatches here. I've got a lukewarm temperature. Um, let me turn it down a bit. Someone asked about the temperature that you should wash whole super soft at. Now, this is not a super wash wool. This is 100% pure wool. 
So it can't actually get that hot. You know, if you were to run a wool program on the washing machine, you would not wash wool at more than 30 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is, Fahrenheit. But a pretty low temperature. Um, we think the body temperature is 37 degrees, and you know, the kind of temperature that you might wash a baby at, it's gonna be quite mild and quite low. So um, what's going to get this out is quite careful agitation and the use of um, soap to emulsify the fat which is in the oil and draw it out of the fibre. So I am going to block this in exactly the same way as I do any of my knitting projects which is really really low key. Um, if I was to wash knitwear just agitating the water, if I was to wash knitwear in the washing machine I would use a wool laundry detergent but I'm not going to do that for hand washing I'm literally just using sensitive shampoo and you can see this is really low key I like to keep things really simple I don't really like to buy fancy products because because my flat is really really tiny I can't store them it's not practical so I'm literally doing this in my sink as proved by hand wash and toothbrush so yeah um, just using some sensitive organic shampoo you could use hand wash but it might be a little bit harsh um, you could you know you could also use like a sensitive delicate dishwashing detergent but I just go ahead and I use shampoo because I figure out that you know wool is the hair of sheep so I can wash my hair and the hair of the sheep um, <laughs> using the same stuff so I'm just popping it in the water um, let's turn the camera and oh um so obviously this was a really really dark red so some of the dye is just bleeding out you might want to bear that in mind if you've knit loads of swatches or if you've knit color work you might want to think um in which case you could wash it out in much much cooler water so i'm just kind of spreading it out and kind of giving it a few gentle scrunches um yeah i'm not really bothered about this color because it was such a rich rich color um in the wool that obviously there's just going to be a bit of excess dye that's bleeding out but this is if this is worrying you you, I would recommend washing it out in cold water instead of the mildly warm water that I've used and also pouring a cap full of just white distilled vinegar um, and that will help to fix the dye. So yeah that's coming out so as well as the dye coming out of the water I can see like a little grey line just in the water here and it kind of looks like dust but it's probably the oil coming beginning to come out so I'm just gonna leave this in here and I'm gonna forget about it for about half an hour and come back then hi everyone I'm back again to finish washing out the spinning oil and block my knitted swatches of my whole super soft and Venetian red it's actually been more than half an hour it's been about an hour because I got distracted by eating food which is my favorite activity <laughs> more than knitting let's be honest um, <clears throat> but it's really not a big deal so you'll have gathered from this video so far that you know I've got my kind of set methods but I'm kind of a little bit flexible within that you know N nothing's gonna have happened ha having soaked this for a little bit longer than the intended or even specified amount all that's going to have happened is that the wool fibers are going to have absorbed even more water because they've had that extra time to do so so let's take a look and yeah you can see that the dye has bled out quite a lot you can see it like emanating from the middle and coming out and also it's probably not captured in camera but there is like a little gray ring around the top of the sink and so I'm just kind of giving it one last little massage. I'm giving it a gentle squeeze. I'm not rubbing and I'm not kind of like going like this and, and it's no kind of massive agitation at all. It's just a kind of gentle massage, like not even as hard as it would be if you were to knead bread or make, you know, a scone. It's literally just a gentle squeeze. And now I'm going <coughs> to let the water run out and pollute the sewage system. Oh, not so good. Let the water run out. <coughs> okay. Now the water's gone, I'm going to give it another squeeze to let out some of the excess water. I'm going to rinse out the sink again. And the only thing about, you've got to be careful about hand washing is that you need to try and keep the temperature fairly consistent between the different batches of water. So I'm running the tap. Um, I'll just rinse out the sink, Ooh, it's getting a bit hot. Why is it so hard to get the right temperature? Anyway, rinse out the sink from all the old stuff. Okay, 
And the reason that you need to try and get the same temperature is because if you go from that kind of mild, lukewarm and cool, um, warmish water, and then you go in with the cold water afterwards straight away, you will risk um, shocking the woolen fibres and you'll therefore risk a little bit of surface felting. Um, so you want to try and keep the water temperature quite consistent across all the different batches so that, you know, these uh, little woolly swatches don't get too worried by anything. So that will do. I've just run another basin of warmish water and now I'll just start to do the same thing, give it a gentle massage to try and work out any excess spinning oil, but also get rid of any excess soap. So again, a bit more dye is coming out, but not as much as before. Nothing near as much as before. Okay, I think I will add a little bit of extra soap. Uh, shampoo, just to be safe kind of working in but not so squeezing never rubbing I really can't stress this um, <clears throat> enough you, you don't want to get any friction all I'm doing is I'm just ensuring that the soap and the water is going through the swatch okay so that's that so you can see like I'm being quite firm but my actions are all quite large you know what I mean I'm like pressing on the larger surface area as much as possible never doing any rubbing at all I'm just pressing it onto the bottom of the sink let the water run out and now I think that that is probably enough but I will just carry on rinsing uh, I think another two times Let's squeeze the water out. Fill up again. And by the time I get to the third rinse, I start to get a bit lazy and I don't even fill the basin all the way full of water. Like. And now you can see far less dye is coming out this time. So I think that looks pretty good. Mm. Again, squeezing out the water. So um, if this was my finished item of knitting, I would probably do another two rinses in the sink um, just to be safe. But because this is only a swatch, um, I don't need to be too overly thorough about, you know, washing out the excess dye and washing out the excess oil. I think I will have got it out now. Um, and also don't forget that if it was a finished item, it's going to be much bigger. So there's going to be much more that needs to be wash washed out, much more excess dye, much more spinning oil. Um, so it's going to take probably at least another two rinses if it's a if it's a large um, adult sized garment but for these swatches I think that that's quite enough so the next step is to dry them off so just um, squeeze out the excess water again no wringing and no twisting just a gentle press you know gentle but firm squeeze and press okay and then if I look at my swatches just as they are wet, um, I can already see a difference from when they were first knit. They already look much fluffier and every individual stitch looks much rounder. So they've already changed and it hasn't even dried yet. All that's happened is the water has soaked in. Um, so that was the six millimeter swatch. And if I look at the five millimeter swatch, again, it doesn't seem as stiff. It seems much, much fluffier. So let's get them dry. So now I'm in another part of my house, I'm just in my bay window and I've got an old towel here. So I've laid the damp swatches on the old towel and I'm just going to fold it up. You can see it's not a precious towel, it's got some bleach stains on it, not a big deal again. Keeping things, you know, low key. So I'm going to roll it up around the old towel, kind of trying to keep it fairly flat on the inside. but not a big deal and then I will um, go in and step all over do a little jog this is better than going to the gym just do a little light jog over the top and just press out all of the water um, the excess water that is that are still in my swatches okay 
and I'll just go in with my hands because I can feel where they are a bit better. And then I'll unroll the towel. And that's pressed out some of the excess fabric, but they're still pretty wet. You can see these like big damp patches there. Um, <clears throat> all right, so again, I'm handling these, you know, not in, not in a particularly precious way because I've squeezed out the water. So you can see that I'm always handling these swatches with both hands, even though, you know, I'm, I'm handling them in quite a practical way. I'm not being super, super delicate and careful with them. Yeah, I'm always moving them around with two hands so that I don't stretch them out of shape. And I'm just um, kneeling here on an old yoga mat. Um, <clears throat> that was a really really cheap one that was you know like five pounds um off amazon and i use that instead of using a specific you know blocking mat um so yeah here are the swatches and now i'm looking at them in daylight again i can quite clearly see um how they've changed in particular this six millimeter swatch is not so holy as it was before and this five millimeter swatch just feels a bit less stiff but you know they're still completely soaking wet so they're it, it's a little bit early to make a judgment about what they're going to turn out like so i'm just going to smooth them out and get the stitches lying in the right place so that they're not wonky too wonky or anything and um <clears throat> And if you were knitting lace or cables at this point you could go in with some rust proof pins and actually pin out all of the patterns you could even use a ruler and make sure that it's you know all the lines are perfectly vertical but this is just going to be a stocking stitch jumper and I'm not too bothered so I'm just going to kind of stretch them out and get them flat and um, that's that so now I will just be leaving these swatches here they will take at least 24 hours to dry possibly 48 hours but the spot that they're in gets quite a lot of sun in the morning so that it will heat up um, and then I'll leave them there and then let's come back and have a look at them in a day or so Hi everyone, it's now 24 hours later and my swatches have dried so let's take a proper look at the fabric. This one, this first one here is the swatch that I knitted on 5mm metal needles and this one here is the 6mm wooden needles that was initially at that really loose and almost ropey and holy kind of um, tension and gauge and as you can see the fabric is pretty transformed. Both swatches have changed quite a lot, but you notice it most dramatically on the, f on the six millimeter swatch here. But let's start with the five millimeter swatch. So it started off very, very dense and firm, and now it's got a lot more drape to it. There's a lot more softness, and it does feel a little bit thicker too. There's a lovely evenness and um, kind of soft fuzziness to the texture, so I like it a lot. I did like it originally, and now I like it even more because it's just got more drape and softness to it now that the spinning oil has been washed out. And here is my six millimeter swatch, which I'm sure you'll agree has been pretty transformed. The fabric is quite different. It's no longer see-through in the same way. It's again, it's kind of come together more. It's got a lot more cohesiveness. The fabric has bloomed beautifully on the top and it's definitely suitable um, for a knitting project. So I knitted this swatch in the round, um, which meant that I carried the yarn behind the swatch um, so that I didn't break it and carried on swatching in the round because that's how I'm going to knit my project. So you can see the um, actual threads of the yarn as well which have also changed. They've got a lot fluffier and fuzzier and if I compare it to the thread of the cone it's, it's just fluffed up and fuzzed up much more and also I can feel the difference too because the washed yarn is much softer and fuzzier whereas the yarn off the cone it does feel physically harder and firmer so it really undergoes a transformation. The final step is to re-measure the gauge on the two swatches and check to see if the tension has changed. So I've measured both of my swatches in several places and I've taken an average 
And both swatches have not grown in width, but they've both grown by one stitch per four inch or 10 centimeters in length. So because there's an extra stitch in the length, that means that actually they've shrunk slightly in length, although the width has more or less remained the same. So that's a really interesting thing to take note of in my knitting. I'll need to take that into account and perhaps knit a piece that is slightly longer to allow for the fact that it's going to shrink up, but that's absolutely no problem. Let's test the elasticity. So this is a five millimeter. It's okay, let's do the length. The length doesn't want to pull as much as the width. Yeah, it's kind of recovering, but quite slowly. And the six millimeter. So again, it's behaving much better than it did before it was blocked. Um, it does stretch out, but the memory is not fantastic. It kind of gets a little bit um, lumpy, as you can see. And if we test stretching out the length, that feels quite good, actually. I quite like that. So because both of these fabrics didn't have the most amazing memory in terms of the retention of the elasticity and the shape of the fabric, kind of how quick it recovered, you know, it's a bit better on the tighter one than it is on the looser one. I like the fabric of both of these swatches and I think that they would be good for different reasons but I'm more inclined this time to go for the 16 stitch per four inch gauge with the six millimeter needles because it's just a little bit drapier and looser and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an oversized garment. I'm not gonna be going for a very fitted garment. I'm gonna go for a loose fit garment with positive ease and for that I think I'll go for the six millimeter needle so that it will knit up just that little bit faster. So now it's finished and it's time to get knitting. So now I've got my swatches all measured up, I'm all ready to cast on with my knitting and I'm really excited about cracking on with my project using this lovely red yarn. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you found it informative and helpful. If you have any further tips about using the whole Super Soft, please do leave a comment down below and let me know and also let me know what are the patterns that you've used with it, what are your favourite things to make with this yarn and what's your favourite colour. If you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe down below for fortnightly knitting podcast episodes, The Crimson Stitchery where I talk about knitting, mending and making all things that are beautiful and useful. Thanks for watching and happy knitting!